through your worship or life. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Clerk. Uh, we'll call this meeting to order. And again, uh, good morning, everybody, or welcome back if you were here before. And uh, look to Councillor Dale for a land acknowledgement. Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We begin our meeting by recognizing the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples of Canada as traditional stewards and caretakers of the land. We acknowledge that the town of Wasaga Beach is located within the boundaries of Treaty 18, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Honinanshoni, Tionantadi, Wendat, and is the home of many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples as part of an intricate nationhood that reaches across Turtle Island. At this time of truth and reconciliation, we welcome the opportunity to work together towards new understandings and new relationships and ask for guidance in all we do. Thank you. Mayor Councilor, thank you very much. And uh, item number two on the agenda, proclamations, recommended motion that Council proclaim April 2024 as Parkinson's Awareness Month and then April 11th as Parkinson, World Parkinson's Day in the town of Wasaga Beach. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Moved by Councilor Dodeo, seconded by Councilor Eagle. All in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item number three, disclosure of pecuniary interests. I have none before me at this time. If at some point uh, throughout the meeting you feel you have one, please let us know at that time. Item number five is the, uh, uh, sorry, item number four is the adoption of the agenda. And it is recommended that the contents of the agenda of March 28th, 2024 be approved as circulated. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Councillor uh, Belanger and uh, Deputy Mayor Snell, all in favor? That motion carries. Item number five is the approval of the minutes, uh, that the minutes of the council meeting held March 14th, 2024 are hereby adopted as circulated. Questions or comments? Mover or seconder, please. Councillor White, Councillor DeLeo, all in favor? That motion carries. Item number six is presentations. And we have uh, four presentations today. The first one, 6.1, is Kelly Kramer, Wasaga Beach Business and Tourism Association. Kelly, we'll ask you to come forth. Push the silver button in the center of your microphone. Welcome, and the floor is yours. Okay. Can you hear me okay? We can. Just pull your mic a little closer to you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Better? Uh, good morning, Mayor Smith, Deputy Mayor Snell, and members of council. I'd like to thank you for your time today. Um, I'm going to read because I'm going to get nervous and I get emotional, so I'm going to try and do this, uh, keep my cool. Um, I'm here today to introduce uh, the Reignited Wasaga Beach Business and Tourism Association, or in short, the Wasaga BTA. Historically, the Wasaga Business Association ra ran as an ad hoc tourism and accommodation group that would react to issues of the day affecting their businesses and then pausing the meetings once the concerns were rectified. Today we are rebranded, uh, we've rebranded Wasaga Business and Tourism Association that is more inclusive to all Wasaga Beach businesses. We have a new board that spans different industries including accommodation, tourist uh, adventures, retail and marketing and includes brick and mortar as well as home-based business owners. We find that this range of business experience gives us a wide knowledge of what other business owners may be dealing with and allows us to respond to requests from all sectors. We recognize that we are in a great position uh, as we have a receptive council uh, that have already set up, with, have set up some of their council priorities in, in support of business growth and we look forward to working with the council and town staff to help build a strong business community. And I forgot to do, let me do this. Andrew will probably have to save me on this. Hey. Oh, one too far. Oh, back a bit. <laughs> okay. Our vision for the BTA is to elevate Wasaga Beach through our businesses, highlighting our town as a world-class destination by uniting businesses to collaborate and reaching common goals. We offer our members advocacy, education, collaboration opp opportunities, and marketing support. And that's our vision. Um, 
For advocacy, we will represent our membership to all levels of government to bring issues to the forefront for discussion. Uh, and we will support the downtown destination management plan because that's big for our uh, tourist industry. For education, we hear from business owners that they are unaware of programs available to them. Our website will share information resources available in town and within the region as they come to us and we will post it in, a one, uh, in an easy, all-in-one place location on the website. We also have great, some great talent in our area and we will work to bring the, that talent in to share with our members, providing learning opportunities that where gaps have been identified. For collaboration, we hope to build more collaboration among our members to be able to offer visitors experiences that will bring them back and offer residents experiences that they'll want to share with family and friends when they visit. Collaboration and marketing will uh, go hand in hand as we start to market our, market our strengths to new revenue streams such as the film industry, the wedding industry, and more. We are also in the process of building out a new website, wasagawelcomes.ca, to invite visitors to check out local businesses with the hope that they will uh, find other things to do, places to eat and stay, and remain a little longer each time and plan to come back. For marketing, one of our first uh, marketing initiatives is to work with the town looking into bringing the film industry to Wasaga Beach. Our research has shown that, uh, that offering our town's hidden gems to the film industry during the off season can lead to increased revenue for the town and businesses alike. Our neighboring towns have already been accessing this market with great success. We look forward to a future meeting with the town to offer what information we have found and how it can help our economy. And I know I keep forgetting to push these. Um, um, okay, how we're different. Um, we've been asked uh, quite a few times how we're different from other groups in Wasaga Beach. We identified groups that the other group, uh, we've identified gaps in what other groups are offering and we'd like to fill those gaps. So first, what we aren't. We are not a single gender group. We are not a one industry only group, nor are we a chamber with man as our mandates are different. We offer advocacy, education, collaboration, and marketing, and we offer it to all businesses, big and small, brick and mortar to home based. Our next steps are to uh, include, uh, our next steps include the Wasaga Beach Business and Tourism launch at uh, Stonebridge Art Gallery on April 15th at 5.30 with a ribbon cutting, and we look forward to seeing our, our council members there. The evening will include a short presentation and a chance to network. We welcome all businesses to attend. Following our launch, we will request a meeting with town staff to discuss looking at bringing the film industry to Saga Beach to help our economy during the off seasons. In conclusion, we see our, our function is to help shape a resilient business community by forging connections, leading change, and strengthening the voices of our members. And we see this time in Wasaga Beach as a great time to grow, the, uh, grow a prosperous business community for both visitors and residents alike. Thank you for your time and your continued support of our business community. Thank you very much, uh, Kelly. Questions from Council? Councillor Timms. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, and, and not really a question, I, I just wanted to uh, comment on the presentation. Um, I've been in many conversations with uh, Kelly and other members of the group. I, I want to say that uh, I think it's a wonderful thing that you've really looked, dug deep into what's offered out there and, and looked for gaps, because I'm not a fan of duplication, and I think that all comes down to good communication. Um, with regards to collaboration, we know that's the way we have to uh, uh, try to uh, operate as businesses. Uh, it's pretty tough out in the uh, climate now, and especially in the tourism industry. I think there's a great opportunity here um, as um, our relationship uh, with the t through the town with South, South Georgian Bay tourism is changing. Um, you know, I had a look at the website, and I think it's um, very nice that the council priorities are uh, listed there with a link. Um, I think that your concept of having um, 
sort of two faces. The Wasega welcomes, which will be for the residential and tourist community, and the WBTA website for the business members is is quite important, I think, because I think tourists, you know, going on sometimes the town website, it, it doesn't necessarily deliver what they're actually looking for. So you have a great board, Kelly. I know that um, Kathy Lane from the accommodation uh, sector is here, but you also have uh, some pretty strong leadership as well. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing <clears throat> what this new association can do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Councillor Timms. And now moving on to Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Thank you, Kelly, for that wonderful presentation. It was very exciting to see that. I have a question and then with a comment. Okay. So, would your organization be instrumental in bringing film production companies to Wasaga Beach? Because truly, I think it's a perfect place for movie shoots. We have the best classic car groups in Ontario, right here in Wasaga Beach with incredible cars ranging from the 1910s over to like 19 or 2000, which I know personally are in demand for these type of cars for movie shoots. And let's not forget about our beautiful beaches, our trails, our river, and now the great arena library, all perfect for movie shoots. And this would be an amazing opportunity and cash flow for Wasaga Beach and the businesses it would bring within the film crews, staying in Wasaga Beach, for instance, Plus, I believe our residences would be proud and honored to watch movies that have been filmed right here in our own beautiful beachfront. Th and thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you. So uh, the question there, I think, uh, Councillor, was will they be instrumental in bringing uh, movie companies to Wasaga Beach? So, uh, Kathy Lane is uh, one of our uh, board members and she's really been digging into this. Um, we have talked to Andrew the odd time about this uh, and we're figuring it is a good way to bring people in on the off seasons. So we're not going to want to be here when we've got crowds, but we've got hidden gems here that we can definitely use. And from what I know from myself and my travels, if I see something in a movie, I want to go and check it out myself. So I th we feel it's another draw to bring t tourism here. Uh, so, but we will be uh, imposing on the town, so that's why we need to talk to town staff first. And we'll also have to talk to the ministry because we will be probably encroaching sometimes on the parklands. But we'll, we'll work that through as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship, and, and through the Mayor to Councillor DeLeo. So we're, we're thinking alike. Uh, we actually met a few weeks ago with, uh, with Kathy, mm -hmm. and we're in the process of setting up a meeting, likely uh, the first or second week of April, with some of the key players in the region to start exploring how Wasaga can really leverage that whole sector. My, right, thanks, yeah, my, my thanks to Kathy Lane for bringing that forward. Great doing. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor. Now we move on to uh, Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you. Uh, you can tell your, your background in web development with the um, placeholder text as the title for the, uh, the lorem <laughs> at some. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Uh, a couple of questions. First off, uh, who's on the board? Uh, we have Kathy Lane for accommodations aboard the boat. We have Amanda from uh, Shaka Tours, uh, Veronica from Veronica's Flowers. Avet uh, Gautier from Avet uh, Gautier Marketing, and then myself with Shine Web Creations. Okay, thank you. And we are looking for new board members as well. Thank you. Uh, one last one, uh, Your Worship. Um, film, are you thinking about bringing back the Wasaga Beach Short Film Festival that had had uh, mixed success, <laughs> but still a fun event? It's not something we've looked at, but it doesn't mean that we can't. Okay, thank you. Great, so uh, thank you, Councillor White. Uh, just uh, quickly, you indicate you're looking for uh, new or more board members. You plan to have a larger board than you have currently? We would like to have a larger board. We're trying to get from, every, from different industries in town. I would love to have, say, a contractor, uh, somebody in the restaurant industry, so that we can get a better uh, idea what different businesses are dealing with, and then we can advocate for them better and bring stuff forward. All right, thank you. Now going on to uh, Councillor Eagle. Thank you, through your worship. Um, thank you, Kelly, for the great presentation. It's exciting. Um, 
business and tourism. Tourism, I know I hardly ran on that number one industry in the world pre-COVID, and I don't think that's changed too much, so hmm. that's paramount. And the film industry, what a, one fact I do know is that North Bay is receiving grant money for animation studio. So the government is looking into the film industry and providing grants. So I absolutely think you're right on the target for that one. And, um, and that uh, your group will have st strong leadership. You're starting with it. I'm happy to hear who you're reaching out to. And I have the utmost confidence that you'll build a strong board in this town. And, uh, bring these items forward, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and now on to Councillor Belanger. Thank you, through you, the Mayor. Uh, thank you for the deputation. I, uh, I think the liaison with the town is extremely important, and I think there's a lot of synergy to be had. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, strategic uh, beautification uh, within town, and obviously, anything that uh, business can do, especially in the tourism sector, to enhance experience, uh, both in uh, visual and in actual emotional uh, experiences within our town would be very good. I think everyone would agree that uh, we have some really outstanding uh, situations in town, but there's a lot of room for an improvement, and I think we're we're going to be driving or hopefully driving a, a lot more visitation and I think that we that the sector really we have to ramp up and be ready and make sure that uh, we are creating the kind of responses that people want to come here often so I applaud <coughs> what you're doing and uh, would ask that you stay in close contact uh, with the with the town thank you Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Belanger and uh, Deputy Mayor Snell. Thank you, Worship. Um, through you, thank you, Kelly, for your presentation. Um, I'm excited to hear that, uh, you know, with Bruce Roberts retiring, um, to see that the, the great work that his organization did is, is evolving and, and moving on and remorphing into this new group. Um, and I can say, you know, with confidence that this entire council, I think outside of uh, Councillor Belanger, we're, we're all entrepreneurs or have been entrepreneurs in the past. And so I don't feel that there's ever been a, a stronger council to support our business community and, and be able to relate to the challenges and encourage that it takes to be a business owner. Um, I have two questions. Um, are you planning to be a registered not-for-profit and are you membership based in terms of your funding? Uh, we do plan on being registered. We have to build up the cash base in the background uh, and we are membership based. Uh, so we're going to start with an inter introductory fee of $150 for the annual and gets us going and that money will all get turned back into building this, uh, what we're trying to do and that includes marketing and uh, training, keeping um, education out there, whatever we can pull in to help our members learn a little bit more. Because we hear that a lot, they, they didn't even know that it was available to them. So we really want to be a go-to location um, that they know what's available at, our, at RTO7, what's available at SBEC, that sort of thing. So we want to be the go-to location and educate them as much as we can what's available for them out there. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Snell. Uh, Kelly, uh, excellent presentation. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, and your board for all you do uh, and uh, are trying to do to improve our uh, amazing community. Um, one of the questions I have is, will you have paid employees or paid board members? Not at this time, no. We've, we're starting lean. Uh, we're all volunteering our time. Uh, eventually, we're hoping we'll have enough membership to pay for a paid membership or paid person uh, just because we figure it's going to be a lot of work to keep up with all the stuff coming in. All the businesses need to keep their uh, registries current so when we're sending somebody to a, a business that it's the right address we need to follow up with training and stuff like that so eventually we will have a paid employee. All right, thank you. Um, I think it's an excellent idea to, to look into the movie industry. As you said, we have many uh, hidden gems, but we also have uh, some very out there and in your face gems, uh, the longest freshwater beach in the world and the greatest, I would argue, sunsets in the world. And I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there was a, a movie made here. Uh, there's been a couple, 
but uh, one in the uh, late 70s, I believe it was called Leopard in the Snow or Snow Leopard or something like that. It started Robert Redford, uh, and that was done shortly after uh, the, uh, back then, uh, Lands and Forest and just became the Ministry of Natural Resources had invested in the provincial park and built the new boardwalk. And so at Beach Area 1, where the uh, main plover area is now and uh, our Spruce Street parking lot, uh, that boardwalk, they came and they, they put railings on it and lights on it. They built this massive sand castle that had 24-7 security guards. Um, uh, uh, and it was there for probably three to four weeks before uh, Mr. Redford and the crew showed up and they were, it was late fall when they were filming that because it, they wanted it to be snowing uh, while they were in the water. And uh, they were fortunate enough that they, they picked a day where it was snowing lightly and uh, there they were in the water, there were horses, so on and so forth. So something to research. Uh, I think it would be a great background for you uh, folks. So again, thank you for your presentation, thank you for all you do. and. Uh, We'll uh, move on now to our motion, and that is the delegation from Kelly Kramer, Wasaga Beach Business and Tourism Association pertaining to the organizational overview and future projects be received for information. Move on a seconder, please, for this. Councillor White, Councillor DeLeo, all in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Moving on to item number 6.2 of our agenda. We have our fire chief to present our monthly report, and uh, I'm going to ask our fire prevention officer, Mr. Chris Ellery, to come forward and join us as well. He's uh, sporting that mustache again that he's had to grow back from a slight error in shaving one day, but it's looking good. <laughs> Welcome, Chris, and uh, Chief, the floor is yours. Thank you, and good morning, Your Worship, uh, members of council. Um, February included 153 calls for service, including two fires, four motor vehicle collisions, 18 fire alarm activations, 13 requests for assistance, nine public hazards, and 126 medical calls. We also completed 45 fire and life safety inspections and four hours of community outreach programming. Uh, firefighter training focused on self-contained breathing apparatus, firefighter survival, low angle rope rescue, and we also put a number of our firefighters through a program called Firefighter Resilient Minds, which is a program that was developed by the Canadian Mental Health Association. As we uh, now start spring, uh, we need to turn our minds to the annual wildfire uh, season that we experience in Ontario. And as you may be aware, uh, the 2023 wildfire season was the worst in modern uh, record. Ontario experienced more than 740 wildfires, which resulted in 441,000 hectares of forest being burned throughout the province between April and October. And this is three times as many hectares as the 10-year provincial average. Uh, so with that in mind, I have asked our Fire Prevention Inspector, Chris Allery, to join us today to speak about the efforts that we take in Wasaga Beach uh, to avoid uh, this type of tragedy. Thank you, Chief. Uh, good morning, Your Worship, members of Council, staff and residents. Um, with the forest fire season upon us, we thought this would be a good time to review the open air burning bylaw for the town, as well as educate uh, the residents um, and staff on the dangers of improper burning. Uh, with the lack of snow accumulation this past winter, we are anticipating a potentially longer and drier forest fire season due to the lack of moisture on the forest floor. This means us as residents have to be more vigilant and cautious of how we burn, when we burn, and what we burn. We have seen in the news over the past year how wildland fires can grow so quickly that they can't be contained for weeks or even months. Over the past five years, the fire department has responded to, on average, 40 complaints of improper, unauthorized open burns, as well as an average of 10 actual active grass fires. The number of complaints received is actually more as during business hours and summer hours, bylaw responds to these calls, most times without the fire department. Bylaw average, by averages about 125 open air burning complaints a year. Most of these complaints are due to excessive smoke due to improper burning materials, and secondly, the size of the fire. We at the fire department want to remind residents of a few key points in the town's open air burning bylaw. Burning must take place in an enclosed burning device and only kindling, dry season firewood shall be used. No burning of leaves, brush, deadfall, construction material, or garbage is allowed. 
A water source to extinguish the fire shall be readily available within three meters of the fire. No fire shall exceed one meter in diameter and a half a meter in height. Burning must not take place any closer than three meters to any combustible objects, including but not limited to buildings, tents, structures, fences, and lot lines. No person shall leave a fire without ensuring it is properly extinguished and no burning is allowed when, the, when a fire ban is in effect. Residents can find the town's current fire danger rating located on our fire danger rating signs located at every entrance into town, the town of Wasaga Beach, Wasaga Beach website, and by contacting the fire hall directly. A full copy of the burning bylaw can be obtained at either fire hall or on the town website under the bylaw section. Thank you for your time, and I welcome any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Deputy Mayor Snell. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, it, it's interesting because we're going through the um, strategic plan in regards to emergency preparedness. And um, so I had my meeting with the, the consultants last week, and this was specifically one of the concerns that I brought up, given that 30% of our community, I think it's 30%, is, is covered by Provincial Park, right? And, and it's interesting because um, when you go through Blueberry uh, trails and whatnot there, you can see that they don't maintain the forest floor. They're not preventing or, or doing any preventative maintenance or even recovery maintenance. Unlike the Simcoe County forest, you go through there, it's, it's clean, it's cleaned out and whatnot. So we've got a lot of live brush uh, igniters sitting in that space. Is there any um, communication or conversation happening with the province to advocate to, to help maintain or clean up our, especially that particular provincial forest? Thank you, through the uh, chair to the deputy mayor. Um, thank you for the comments, and you're absolutely right. Uh, generally speaking, the provincial park is an unmanaged forest, meaning that there isn't pre-cut uh, fire uh, breaks through the forest and the brush is cleaned up. It's left natural. Um, there, there are ongoing conversations with the local superintendent in, in, in making sure that the recreational use of those trails remains appropriate, and we try and limit any, any potential ignition source that might cause. With that said, we know that a natural cause can happen like a lightning storm as well. Um, we have uh, applied for two separate grants this year uh, that would increase our uh, wildland firefighting equipment cache, uh, which we're waiting to hear back. So we're hopeful we can actually uh, prepare a little bit better by having the appropriate equipment at hand. Uh, but the reality is, is that a forest that large, should we have an out of control wildfire, our priority is going to be life safety and it's going to be evacuating nearby residents first and foremost. Our crews will make an initial, you know, attempt to control the fire, but it may be a situation where we would contact the uh, province's wildland firefighting teams uh, to arrive with aviation services and ground support in order to c control those fires. So, um, you know, part of ongoing summaries, uh, uh, sorry, conversations uh, to try and manage those risks, but there's a, there is an actual danger there that we just need to be able to accept and prepare for. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Belanger? Yes, through the mayor, I, I had the same uh, question as uh, the deputy mayor, but uh, to add to that, uh, I, I'm concerned, especially in Wasega Beach, I, I feel there's been uh, high wind events are becoming much more common. And uh, although they don't maintain the forest floor, I've, I've walked most of this forest and I, I don't know of any fire breaks uh, that have been managed either because uh, you combine high wind and dry conditions, uh, increasing temperatures. Like, I mean, we, part of the emergency preparedness has to be to anticipate that uh, an out of control fire could happen within our provincial park. It's certainly happened quite a bit to the north of us. So uh, again, I think it's very important that, that Council understands that if there is dialogue with the provincial park and if they are going through a similar emergency preparedness plan. Chief? 
Uh, thank you, and through the chair to Councillor Blanger. Um, if, if it would appease uh, uh, Council, I would be happy to have a conversation or another conversation with our Superintendent of Parks and uh, and carry this conversation for, forward on their emergency preparedness and then report back uh, with some information and, and hopefully a strategic plan of uh, how we can make the, these woodlands a little bit safer for all. I think that's an excellent point. So, uh, Madam Clerk, do we need a resolution uh, for that to request that report to come back uh, from staff? I think we could take it as direction. All right, so we're good. Good. All right. Uh, Councillor Eagle. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship. Um, thank you for your presentation and thank you for the reminder. And I fess up, I did not know that we were not to burn leaves. So since we're in such a cottage area, it's a really good reminder and I'll do my best to get the word out uh, to the cottager, cottagers and people in our area and the visitors that love their bonfires, that uh, that's a no-no. Thank you. I think the other one that was important to note is construction material. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, what's wrong with burning a two by four, a pine two by four, I mean, or a spruce two by four. Um, can, can you elaborate why uh, that type of material? I get pressure treated, but a regular two by four, why that's uh, not allowed? Uh, the biggest problem with uh, especially um, soft woods like, uh, like what you would buy a two by four is uh, it, it'll, that, that's the type of wood that's gonna, uh, it's gonna pop. It's going to, it's gonna pop out of the fire. It's gonna cause, um, sparks to leave the fire and it could potentially um, start other smaller fires around your property. Um, generally hardwood when it burns it'll it'll stay inside the fire and you don't get those big pops that come off the uh, off the wood. Excellent that's uh, very interesting. Other questions or comments from members of council? All right uh, firefighter Allery thank you so much good to see you. Thank you for having me. Chief, anything to add? No, I think we're good. No other questions or comments? All right, then we do have a resolution uh, that the report titled Fire Department Report February 2024 to the Council Meeting of March 28, 2024 be received for information. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Eagle and Councillor uh, Timms, all in favor? That motion carries unanimously. And moving on to item number seven is our delegations. We have uh, uh, two delegations today. The first one, 7.1, is Jody King from Jones Consulting Group, a request for tree removal permit 25 Ryder Road in Wasaga Beach. And Madam Clerk, I see that uh, Jody is also doing the second one uh, for the same reason for Park Drive and Wally Drive. So I think we can do these together. If Council is desirous of that, we could, yes. Yeah, okay. Go through one and then we'll just go right into the other. Welcome, Jody. Uh, Senator Button, sit there we are. The floor is yours. Thank you, Your Worship. Good morning, and members of Council. I'm Jody King with the Jones Consulting Group, uh, representing two developers in Wasega Beach. Um, as mentioned, the, f uh, the first one I'll discuss is at 25 Ryther Road, and it's uh, approximately an 80 acre parcel uh, with about 18 to 20 acres developable and the owner is proposing um, about 30 townhouse blocks. So I'm here to ask for permission to clear trees for geotechnical investigation. So we just need pathways to get to uh, boreholes. Uh, the pathways would be approximately four meters wide with uh, eight meters vertical clearance a little larger at the drilling points. And the critical timing is because of the uh, bird nesting window, which uh, restricts from April 1st through August 15th, I believe. So we have a contractor lined up for Ryther Road who would actually begin and finish this weekend if that is uh, permitted. That's it? Well, I'm sure there's questions. All right, good. No, I just want to make sure you were finished. Uh, I just want to get some clarification before I open the floor to Council. So I've heard two dates over the last week, uh, one being April 1st and the other one possibly being April 15th. Can you, uh, can you touch on that, uh, uh, General Manager Lalonde? All right. Uh, 
right? No. Sorry, Your Worship. I'm not clear on the definitive dates myself. But okay, the, Madam Clerk. Or, or maybe uh, a Director of Planning, one or the other? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, administration has been discussing this within the recent weeks. So the town's bylaw states that the nesting um, timeline is April 1st to August 15th, which can then be extended to August 30th. However, the Migratory Birds Act states typically it's April 15th. So if council so desires, we can um, exempt that portion of the bylaw to state April 15th to align with the federal act. So does anyone know why we wouldn't be aligned with the federal act? Through your worship, the bylaw was drafted in 2019. There could have been amendments to the Migratory Birds Act, and there could be fluctuation. I believe that um, in some research, it fluctuates that timeline. So sometimes March 28th, um, it's, it's all dependent on the season. All right, I'll open the floor for questions and comments to members of council. Seeing, oh, count, sorry, Deputy Mayor Schnell. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we hear a lot in the community um, concern about um, tree clear cutting, especially when when permits are not finalized and and um, you know sales are not in queue, right? So um, I, I would be supportive of clearing only trees to allow for the equipment to go in and do the necessary work in order to fulfill your requirements for the permits. Uh, but but no other trees. It it hurts my heart when when folks come in and they clear the entire lot, and then it sits there vacant for five seven years, overgrown with brush and and whatnot. When a beautiful forest could have been there for another five or seven years until that person's ready to build. So, I'm not a fan of clear cutting uh, prior to permits being ready and shovels being ready. But in this situation, enough of a swath to be able to get in and do what you need to do. I'm okay with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Snell. Uh, Councillor, now you've opened the floor. Look at look at this. Councillor Timms. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, I'm kind of echoing um, Deputy Mayor Snell's uh, feelings about this, but I am pleased to read in your application that this would only be in between boreholes. So um, my hope would be that it would be done as efficiently as possible so that you're not removing trees unnecessarily. What I, I don't really understand is the, the part about all removed trees will be kept on site at a safe distance from the working areas. Um, is that a common practice? I, I just uh, d didn't understand why that happens. Yes, I think it is uh, common just to, when you're just clearing the pathway to allow access for the equipment, um, the trees would then just be left to the side, pushed aside, and uh, dealt with in future if the development proceeds and tree clearing goes on. Go ahead, Councillor. And, and just as a follow-up, do, do you have any idea how wide those pathways are? How much um, removal is required? Yeah, I've, I've seen 12 feet and I've seen three meters, so it's, it's somewhere between three and four meters of width. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor White? Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. My question isn't necessarily so much for um, the pathways as it is the, uh, the migratory birds part of this conversation. Um, we're already seeing birds back. I, I don't know if we should be, in my opinion, changing uh, the bylaw to push it back. Uh, by two weeks when we're already seeing early spring, early spring, early spring, and seeing birds back, I think that we need to adhere to the bylaws it was written. Uh, I think it makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, and to clarify, I think that uh, what the clerk was indicating is that we could, but I don't see any motion uh, for that or a need at this point either. So I think we're, we're good there. Councillor Eagle. Thank you, and through you, Your Worship. Yes, I was kind of on the same train of thought, so thank you. I, I read your report, and for the boreholes, I understood that. I'm back to, are we on this one doing April the 1st? Like, would you have time, or are we going to April 15th? And I do, I have read the Migra Migratory Bird Act, so, you know, I understand that I'm with Councillor White. That, that's a whole thing that may be looked at. But for now, what are we doing here, April 1st or the 15th? We were um, of the understanding that it was April 1st, so we have made accommodations with a contractor, if it's permitted who would start tomorrow morning 
and the job would be done by Saturday. Thank you. I like that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments from members of Council? Um, so I do, uh, I have some concerns here and, and uh, number one is we, we see this on a regular basis where uh, developers are coming in and asking to, uh, to cut trees uh, kind of last minute. Um, I understand why this happens, uh, but it seems to be an issue here ongoing. So I want to look to our, uh, our director of planning. I, is this something that's going to be hopefully rectified in future as we complete our uh, official plan? Through your worship, um, it is not uncommon uh, for municipalities, not on Lake Musega Beach, to get these kind of inquiries. Uh, in this particular area, because of the Migratory Birds Act, we're all in the same region, and it's generally between April 1st and April the 15th. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not, uh, we react to the applications that was we receive them. We don't have any uh, ability to uh, request that people get them in sooner, but we can certainly start doing that. We can reach out to the development community to make sure that if they're going to be coming in with applications going forward, that we try to get as much as a, as a head start as we can possibly do. And it's not, a, I don't think your worship so much a function of the official plan. It would probably be more of a function of an updated tree cutting bylaw. And I think that that's something that uh, General Manager Danny Rogers has spoken to council as recently as last council that uh, the clerk would like to be alleviated of that uh, and have that uh, come into our domain, which is uh, un unfortunate for us, but probably good for her. And it's probably common practice that the planning department deals with these in the future. When we do that, we'll probably be coming back to council and getting uh, clear direction on when and when you do not wish the administrator to be issuing these types of permits and getting the deadlines figured out and other things that we can do to help that so this doesn't happen again. There's always a little pain when it comes to give and take, Trevor. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you. So it, um, what, what I want the public to understand is that, you know, in order for the, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Mr. Director, but in order for the developer to complete their application, uh, they need to do these boreholes. And if this is a densely wooded area, they need to clear an area to get this track equipment in there. So this is not council, you know, bending and cowing to a developer. It's a necessity in order to determine whether or not this development can move forward. And so that brings me to my next point. So I have no issue supporting at this time, uh, again, very clearly the track lines that are required, and I'm sure that they're on the drawing, and you see them in the report, and that we adhere to that strictly. But um, just shoving this stuff to the side uh, until we know whether or not the application is going to be accepted, I, I'm not, a, that, that doesn't work for me, because as, as we talked about in our last a conversation uh, and fire prevention it just leaves more uh, debris on the on the uh, forest floor should we have a fire and and it's just more kindling and more issues for fire department so on and so forth so uh, I'd certainly like to see that if you're going to cut it down that you're going to cut it down in the proper fashion you're going to try and put that wood to good use if it's hardwood or whatever and you're going to take it and move it off site and get it to wherever it's got to go to become uh, reused at least and not just thrown aside um, the concern is if the application, for whatever reason, isn't passed, then what happens with that? So I'd like to see that taken off-site sooner rather than later. Uh, other than that, those are my comments. Um, did you have anything to add, Jody? Uh, just to your point, Your Worship, um, if, if the trees are not of, say, usable nature, would, would it then be acceptable to you to maybe just chip them? If, you know, if they're not suitable for logs or, or repurposing? So I'm looking to our chief. He's given us the thumbs up there, chief. Did you have a comment on that? Yes, uh, your worship. That would be perfectly fine with myself. I do wonder if there's a, a different reason for leaving them on site. Maybe it has to do with uh, moving of materials off site and spreading, you know, some sort of a parasite or virus or something to new locations, possibly. But from a fire safety perspective, uh, yeah, the, the more that we can accelerate the decomposition of the wood, uh, the safer everything will be. We're hearing that would be acceptable. Uh, did you have something to add, uh, Trevor? No, Your Worship. I think uh, the chipping on the, of the brush on, as long as it's uh, remaining on site and as long as they're not uh, burning it, uh, that is fine. As, and also that they're not grubbing or stumping. Um, but what you were describing is, is fine with us. 
All right, so we do have a motion then on this, the delegation from Jody King, the Jones Consulting Group Limited, pertaining to a request for tree removal permit for 25 Ryder Road, Wasaga Beach, be received. Any other questions or comments? Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? We Sorry, Your Worship. Sorry. My apologies. If Council would like to issue uh, the permit, at this point, this would just be to receive the delegation from Mr. King. Um, if Council wants to uh, issue the permit, mm -hmm. I do have a delegation, or excuse me, a recommendation um, ready to go. But did we want to hear the second request for theme park and Wally? Yeah, that, that was my thought. I, I knew that you had that, so we'd hear the second one and we'd just do them together. Yes. Uh, time is of the essence here, obviously, so I think Council would be prepared uh, to move forward with that today so as that they can get started tomorrow. So, yeah. All right. Um, well, I'll go back to this question. Then you've heard the question. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? This is for 25 Ryder. Madam Clerk. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if we allow Mr. King to um, express the request for theme park and Wally, okay. and then we will deal with both um, okay. at the same time. All right. Jody, floor is yours. Okay. So um, our second site in a very similar situation, uh, preliminary stages, we need to do geotechnical investigation, is located at Theme Park Drive and Wally Drive. Um, approximately 5.14 hectares of land. Um, I know you have the application before you, so you've seen the map. Um, we have become aware that there are provincially regulated wetlands within this property, uh, which have not yet been addressed with the Conservation Authority. So that would be our next step, to go to the Conservation Authority and seek approval for disturbance within the wetland. Um, again, so that we could carry on our investigation, monitor groundwater and uh, get soil compositions and indeed see if the land is developable. Um, so in light of the regulated wetlands, I'm not really expecting an approval on that one today. That'll be uh, pending the outcome of the Conservation Authority um, and also would put us, you know, into the, the uh, bird nesting period. So uh, there are cases where that can be done with a biologist who could review the lines that are intended to be cut and uh, sort of give us an all clear. Um, but again, that's, that's going to be a little bit down the road, it seems. So as I recall from reading the report uh, and the EP area within uh, this property, uh, that's why I thought we would do uh, do them separate because I, we, I mean, we really can't give that approval today. We could give, I guess, a conditional approval uh, that providing the NVCA approves it, then the town has already said, good, go ahead. Um, but I'm thinking these are items that we should probably deal with separately so as that uh, it's clear. And I guess the last point I'll make before we get to that uh, is that um, back to your point, uh, Mr. Director, is that I think we do need to uh, look at uh, some uh, rules around this and that we do make it clear in future to all developers, not just uh, these developers. That, I mean, you all know uh, you've got to do boreholes before you're going to be uh, developing a piece of property. And uh, so let's not leave it to the last minute because uh, council might not be as accommodating in future. Did you have something to add, Madam Clerk? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, administration was the thought of allowing the permit to be issued. However, there would be a set of conditions and the conditions would be different for both applications due to the location of the second request. So the conditions would include an NBCA permit, conformity to the Migratory, Migratory Birds Act, um, as well as adhering to the nesting period. So all those will form part of the permit. So unless met, no cutting can incur, occur. And I would just I would just add that we uh, one of the conditions is that the the trees be removed from site should they have, be useful and if not that they would be chipped and uh, and left on site. All right, so Madam Clerk, I'm going to look to you. Then uh, we're going to deal with these separately or together. Together. All right. Do you want to read the resolution? But before you do, Councillor Belanger. Yes, uh, just on the second request, uh, if I'm understanding correct, there, there hasn't been application to the NVCA at this point, or, there, or is that in process? Uh, that is in process. Yeah, it hasn't been done yet. All right, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. 
the recommended motion that the delegation from Jody King the jo from the Jones Consulting Group Limited pertaining to the request for tree removal permit for 25 Rither Road, Rither Road Theme Park and Wally Drive, Wasaga Beach be received. That council authorized staff to grant a permit to the Jones Consulting Group for 25 Rither Road, Theme Park Drive and Wally Drive to facilitate movement of equipment and personnel to accommodate geotechnical investigations and that the Jones Consulting Group adhere to Section 6 of Bylaw 2019-82 and any other conditions included by staff. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Members of Council, you've heard the question. Can I have a move and a seconder, please? Councillor White, Deputy Mayor Snell, all in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Jody. Thank you, Best Rush. of luck. Moving on to item number eight uh, on the agenda is our staff reports. Uh, uh, the following staff reports uh, have been pulled uh, and moved to matters for consideration to be voted on separately. Those are uh, 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, and 8.7. Uh, the recommended motion is that the following consent list under the staff reports and all recommendations contained therein be adopted, excluding agenda items pulled from the motion and moved to matters for consideration to be voted on separately. Can I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Moved by Councillor Tim, seconded by Councillor Eagle. All in favor? That carries unanimously. And moving on to item number 8.6. Uh, oh, no, sorry. No, we're going to go to uh, correspondence. Thank you. Uh, item 9.6, correspondence item, is recommended that the council list items under correspondence be received for information, except for correspondence moved to matters for consideration and to be voted on separately. Can I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Councillor DeLeo and Councillor White. All in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Uh, moving on to item number 10, uh, minutes and board uh, committees. Uh, 10.1, uh, that the council list items under minutes and boards and committees be received for information, except for minutes moved to matters for consideration to be voted on separately. We're going to second her for this, please. Councillor Ego and Councillor Timms, all in favor? That carries unanimously. And on to item number 11 now, matters for consideration. We're at 8.1, the Wasaga Beach uh, Public Library Service Update. And uh, that is pulled by Councillor Belanger and Councillor Eagle. So, Councillor Eagle, you can go first. Thank you. Thank you to you, Your Worship. Um, who was I here? I have, I didn't know where we were that quickly. For yes, your here worship. it is. I had a quote. Sorry. Thank you. This is on the um, the library one, correct, or the parks? Where are we on? Sorry. On the library. I'm, I'm, this is the services report. I believe a lot of the comments surrounded the advocacy report. That's later in the agenda. The library ad advocacy for funding? Yes. Is that the one now? Yeah. No. Yeah, this is the library services. I believe you had asked that um, it not be pulled by yourself. Now. I was remiss in identifying that for the mayor. No, My if, apologies. If that was... 8.1, the service update. I said that I wasn't going to speak to that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, uh, take a rest then, Councillor, and we'll go to Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, actually, I, I pulled this uh, item because it is a very good news story. And uh, I, I would ask uh, our uh, CEO of the, the library to maybe give us the highlights especially February to February, because uh, I thought that was very exciting. I know our facility is very new and that has an impact, but uh, I think there were some uh, very encouraging uh, numbers that uh, you might want to speak to. Thank you, through the chair. Uh, 2023 was a very successful year for the library. Following the COVID closures, we managed to get our key performance indicators to either equal or surpass the pre-COVID best year of 2019. We're very excited to have more visitation, uh, more circulation, and certainly more participation in our programming. As well in 2023, we managed some to complete some major projects, rebranding the library, 
uh, creating a new website and bringing in RFID technologies. So we had some great momentum heading into our new library, which of course opened in uh, January. Our numbers for February, which is when we have started tracking officially for the new library, show that the uptake of our new facility is going gangbusters and we couldn't be more excited. Our traffic through the building in February was more than 14,000 people and that is certainly a record for our library services. In February of 2023 it was around 4,000 so you can see the excitement in the community and that it's not just the lookers. Uh, we have had a key high in the number of new cards that we have given out in February. More than 700 people got a new card, which is absolutely terrific to see. We are seeing that uh, the use of our computers is also banner and the use of the library collection is higher than ever. So as they say, you build it, they will come. They have come. We are very excited about uh, what this means for the rest of our year. And uh, we are still unrolling some of our programming for the community. And we hope that uh, certainly more visitation will come as more and more people are aware of what we have to offer. So thank you. Thank you, Pam. Anything further, Councillor Belanger? Oh, that's, uh, I, I think that's very exciting. I'll look forward. I hope that uh, trend continues. And uh, obviously, I, I believe our community is embracing the, this uh, new uh, amenity very uh, extremely well. So, Thank you. Any other questions or comments from Council? Councillor Timms. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. I just want to comment that uh, seeing firsthand as counselors rep, council rep on the library board, um, 2023 was a huge year for the board and the staff. Um, having that big move in place um, and all the things around that, that it's really kudos to you, Pam, and, and to our uh, chair of the library board, Lorraine Grusick, Grubeck, who's in the, the um, chamber. Um, the enthusiasm and excitement drove everybody and I think everyone just kept pushing through all that extra work um, because of the you know, enthusiasm and excitement to get to the next level and we certainly see that. When I'm at the library, I'm shocked at the, when people walk through the door for the first time, they literally go, open mouth excitement, what a, a gorgeous place. But basically what I'm saying to you is thank you to your staff Thank you to the board members. It's uh, been a, a really wonderful opportunity for me to be on the board during this exciting time. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? Uh, <laughs> Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Mayor. There, there's just one more. I ha had the privilege to uh, uh, take uh, uh, a resident, uh, well, uh, actually a business owner of our community through the library, uh, Ken Voss, the owner of Canadian Tire. And uh, as uh, Pam walked us through the library, we, we noticed a stand where people can borrow uh, snowshoes and fishing rods. And uh, um, uh, Mr. Voss was very kind enough to say that, oh, I, I could donate items for this stand. And then we went on a little further and we saw the craft room and Pam indicated that we're going to be expanding that with some woodworking and tools. And uh, Mr. Voss indicated that he would be more than happy to make some donations of tools for that event. So uh, I, uh, I, I think it's uh, important to notice, uh, not just uh, from uh, Canadian Tire, but I know there's been tremendous support and sponsorship in our community and uh, it's paying dividends. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and uh, you know it's uh, it's great to see uh, how many businesses in our community have really taken up the call here uh, to be a part of this. Uh, but uh, you know, Mr. Voss is a very generous man. So next time, bring him through town hall and take him take him to the vault and see if he can make some donations there. Would you please, Councillor? Uh, and thank you uh, to Ken Voss and to all our businesses, for that matter, uh, for for all they do in our community. Deputy Mayor Snell. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to comment, um, excuse me, I really appreciate that um, because you, you have such dynamic programming, especially in that community space and with the blue blocks and all of, 
um, that awesome stuff. I was really pleased to see that you're implementing and enforcing that they have to show their library card in order to participate in those programs. Um, not that I'm, I'm not a fan of sharing all of this awesomeness with everyone, but I like to see that uh, any folks that are outside of our community, uh, non-contributing taxpayers, that they're paying their, their fair share. So I just wanted to comment on that. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Deputy Mishnell. Any other questions or comments? Um, I think I'm going to just take a, an opportunity here and, and maybe uh, um, if uh, Chris could speak to the live, uh, sorry, the arena and the walking track and the other facilities and, and the use we're seeing on those. And, I, and I'm asking this because, you know, this is such an amazing, great news story. And, and every time I would walk in to this building uh, during the construction, especially at the end in the library, I was always amazed at how quickly staff were working to get things completed. In the library, you'd walk in there one day and the shelves were completely empty. There were boxes piled everywhere. And in 24 hours, I would walk back in there and just full amazement at how hard and how quickly staff were able to get, you know, books on the shelves and, and things organized and, uh, you know, Chris's crew over there making sure that the, all the final touches were on and, you know, getting decals on windows and doors and so on and so forth. So um, I bring this up because uh, it was brought to my attention just yesterday. Someone, I guess, was in the arena last week at 4.30 one day and took a picture uh, of our two rinks and the rinks were not in use at 4.30 in the afternoon and uh, felt it necessary to put a comment out there that, you know, this is our tax dollars a great use so much for, you know, um, this, this facility, which is just, I'm sorry, forgive me, but just ridiculous. Um, you know, uh, I can tell you I'm in and out of that building as, as many other people. That building is really being used well, and, and we should all be proud of it. Uh, this council, the last council, and councils before that, and staff, uh, and our community, uh, for that matter. So um, the negative, you know, the, the few negative Nellies are, are what they are. But can you just talk, Chris, uh, you know, a little bit about the usage you're seeing and the uptake in, in rinks and the walking track? And like that walking track, I'll tell you, it's, it's busy. And the mini sticks rink, which is just, uh, it's always great to be up there as well. Chris? Certainly. Uh, thank you, Mayor Smith. I, I would say uh, Pam does know that her record actually hit during March break. So uh, it was the week after March break maybe when this uh, empty ice uh, surface was uh, snapshotted. But uh, Pam knows that over 4,000 people in uh, March break alone. And I think the number for the week of March break at the TPL was only uh, exceeded the one weekend that we did our rock concert. So I think we hit 10 and a half, 11,000 people through the building that week, and we were eight and a half, 9,000 during the week of March break, and 4,000 of those people visited the library. So obviously, March break is a good time, kids out of school, to see volume in the building, and it was a chaotic time. Uh, uh, for staff, we're still learning how to deal with this volume, uh, but uh, generally, in eight weeks, so less than two months, the, the building, if everyone remembers, was open uh, on January 29th, a Monday after uh, our grand opening open house moment. Uh, in those eight weeks, we saw 66,000 people in the building, and about a third of them are also going under this people counter into the library. So uh, it, it seems that we are on a regular basis seeing 1,000, 2,000 visitors a day. And uh, um, knowing one of our other most uh, um, used recreation facilities, the YMCA, those numbers are comparable. So without a membership center, without a specific appointment where someone is going in for a swimming lesson or a half hour session on a treadmill, we are seeing similar volume in this new facility. And I think that's truly what it's all about. Uh, with regard to ICE, uh, um, as Council knows, we have a three, four year projection. We've planned a 10 to 15 percent growth on uh, each year uh, moving forward from uh, the numbers that we saw in the old single pad arena. There's always going to be this uh, kids are in school midday picture. It will be the last layer that we fill. There are strategies around this, uh, seniors hockey, homeschool hockey. We're actually seeing a lot of kids, I don't know how they're getting out of school, but their parents are bringing them to 8.30 a.m. shinny. There's 8.30 8 a.m. shinny on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it is picking up speed. One is for adults only and the open one that allows kids is actually busier. So 
we will figure out ways uh, over time. Uh, school groups is a great way to get our uh, ICE uh, participant value, if it were. But uh, uh, certainly summer will be another big milestone for us. And we know that August is the busiest month of the year in uh, the Wasaga Beach Arena. We've always been a summer ice center. And we're trying to build out two rinks now. So I think that uh, uh, the, these revenue uh, projections should be realistic and that uh, we've been conservative. But uh, the best is yet to come. And uh, we certainly are not empty. And we are ahead of our monthly uh, revenue numbers in our old arena. Thank you very much, uh, Director Roos. Uh, Deputy Mayor Snell, you, you must, did you join the Boulanger Club? Sorry. <laughs> I just, it, it, because you gave opportunity for Chris to speak, I wanted to, to just share as well. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in Zumba on Monday and uh, with my sister and, and one of my good friends, and it was in the Remax room. And uh, it was full, um, filled with all ladies, no, no gentlemen came out to the class, unfortunately, but um, all abilities. Uh, the energy was magnetic. Um, the instructor was fantastic. And I was surprised because, of course, you got those sliding doors there, the constant traffic going past. And that was at um, 5.30, I think, in the evening. So what would I would consider to be a quiet time, you know, the supper hour, um, figure skating was just wrapping up. So it was just constant uh, back and forth. So I just wanted to say that um, I'm, I'm super excited that we're programming the space as well for recreation to balance out opportunities for our residents who sometimes you couldn't get into the recplex because things filled up so quick, so quickly. And even in this situation with Zumba, uh, it, it filled up literally over the weekend. It seemed like everybody was registering and thinking about uh, exercise classes. So um, I just love to see the, the recreation programming. And as well to the, to the walking track point, um, it's so nice when you go up there, folks are in wheelchairs, they're in walkers of all ages, all sizes, and um, really enjoying the indoor safe walking space. So congratulations to, to you and your team, it's, it's phenomenal. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? All right, so we do have a motion that can, can uh, sorry, that the report titled Wasaga Beach Public Library Services Review to Council Meeting of March 28, 2024 be received. Can I move it a second for this, please? Sorry, Councilor Eagle. Your, your Worship, uh, we have to do a recorded vote. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, record. It's okay. Big, big red letters, too, recorded vote. Night, people. <laughs> Madam uh, Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Belanger. In favor. Councillor DeLeo. In favor. Councillor Eagle. In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell. In favor. Councillor Timms. In favor. Councillor White. In favor. And Mayor Smith. Uh, in favor, but. Sorry, uh, uh, we do need a We need a mover and a second. Thank you. My yeah. apologies. We're going to second her for this. Moved by Deputy Mayor Snell, seconded by Councillor Belanger. All in favor? Sorry, <laughs> the, Madam Clerk, you've already taken. Yes. We're moving on. Yes. All right, good. 8.2, Community Emergency Management Exercise Update. Uh, and I'll, uh, this was pulled by, uh, again, Councillor Belanger. Councillor Belanger. Thank you. Through the Mayor, uh, we covered most of this, obviously, during the fire report. But uh, I, I think this is, again, uh, forward thinking. Uh, we, we hope we never, ever have to have an emergency in our community. Uh, but they happen. And uh, I think uh, in forward thinking, this community emergency management exercise is extremely important. So if uh, the chief would like to make any additional comment, fine, but we did cover quite a bit earlier. Sure, thank you. That through the chair to Councillor Blanchet. Uh, the purpose of the report today is actually just to let you know that we are continuing to plan our, our Community Emergency Preparedness Day and we have a change in location. Our original uh, location in the community is no longer available, so our new address is actually going to be the old arena uh, uh, site and the forest uh, that is in behind that site, which is owned by the town. Um, and there's a couple of elements to the day. Uh, it's going to be busy. It's going to be an excellent chance to collaborate with other agencies. We have the Canadian Armed Forces involved. We have we have Wasaga Beach Fire Department, we have Beausoleil First Nations Fire Department, we have the OPP, the County of Simcoe Paramedics, the Emergency Management Team and Social Services from, from Simcoe County, as well as the Health Unit and Georgian Bay Search and Rescue. So all together we have about 175 
uh, first responders and frontline personnel that are going to come together in about a five hour period uh, to, to go through this exercise. And then additionally, we have about 25 volunteers that are stepping up to assist us. So phase one of the day is uh, really about patient care. Um, so we're going to be placing uh, individuals inside the fo forest with simulated injuries. Uh, first responders will enter the forest, forest have to find them. Uh, there's going to be a few technical rescue disciplines practice including some low angle rescue uh, as well as extrication out of the forest where they'll be brought to awaiting paramedics who will triage and simulate transport of them. Um, uh, phase two is really about the wildland firefighting preparation. So we'll be deploying some uh, pumps, hose, that sort of thing to put out some simulated fire and rest assured there is no real fire happening or real smoke happening. This is all just uh, simulated. Um, and then following this community-based exercise, uh, we actually have an open house which is being put together and it's going very, very well. We have about 15 agencies involved that are have a focus on emergency preparedness, most of them local. And we have uh, at our new arena site, uh, uh, open house for the public between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, where public can join us, visit various information booths where they'll learn about uh, how to best prepare themselves if we do have a larger emergency in the uh, community. Um, so that's a general overview and uh, I appreciate your support in allowing us to make this happen. Thank you, Chief. Uh, it's an excellent exercise uh, and an excellent opportunity for uh, our firefighters, our, our first, our paramedics, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, exciting that uh, we're doing it here in Wasaga Beach as well. And citizens can get out and observe and uh, see what it is that uh, you folks really do and deal with on a, on a fairly regular basis. So any other questions or comments on this? All right, uh, so we do have a motion that the report titled Community Emergency Management Exercise Update to Council Meeting of March 28, 2024 be received for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder on this, please? Moved by Councillor Ego, seconded by Councillor Timms. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Blanche. In favor. Councillor DeLeo. In favor. Councillor Ego. In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell. In favor. Councillor Timms. In favor. Councillor White. In favor. Mayor Smith. Carried unanimously. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And moving on to 8.3, this item uh, is William, and our William Arnell Playground uh, and Park Renewal. And this was pulled by Councillor Belanger and Councillor Eagle. Councillor Eagle, go ahead. You and through you, Your Worship. Um, yes, I have one of my favorite quotes here when I read this report is the measure of any great civilization is it cities and a measure of a city's greatness is to be found in the quality of its public spaces its parks and squares and i'm a firm believer in that so i just wanted to say it's a pleasure um, driving about town or walking out of the recplex and seeing the enthusiastic participants in the playgrounds uh, whether it's the kids uh, testing their skills and challenging each other as kids will do or the parents and the grandparents pushing a child on the, the swing, the simple pleasure of doing that. Um, it always gives me a smile. So I want to thank the staff, um, as it is one of Council's top priorities to improve community parks and recreation. So thank you on behalf of Council. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Your Mayor. I uh, echo uh, Councillor Eagle's comments, but uh, I would say that uh, our fast-growing <laughs> community also has a very fast growing uh, zero to 19 population. And uh, over the, the years on council, the number of residents that have uh, brought concern to me about the need for parks or the updating of parks has been substantial. I, I believe uh, the previous council and our council continue to listen to our residents. I, I think the, the new parks uh, and updated parks are very exciting. And uh, to Councillor Ego's point, uh, I've seen them uh, very active. They're being very well utilized. I think this is uh, very good for not just the growth of the community, but the growth of our children. And uh, I think it's a good news story. I wish we could flash up the, the picture, but uh, anyhow, it's a, another very exciting looking park. So congratulations to, to staff for getting that done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none. Um, 
We have a motion that the report titled uh, Contract Award PW 2024 William Arnell Park Playground Renewal to the Council meeting of March 28, 2024 be received. And that Council does hereby award contract number PW 2024-09 for the William Arnell Playground uh, Park Renewal uh, to New World Park Solutions for the prices stipulated in their bid submission. And that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to execute an agreement with New World Park Solutions uh, subject to approval of content by the Director of Public Works and financial content by the Chief Financial Officer. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Moved by Deputy Mayor Snell and seconded by Councillor Belanger. All in favor, sorry, Madam Clerk. Councillor Belanger. In favor. Councillor DeLeo. In favor. Councillor Ego. In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell. In favor. Councillor Timms. In favor. Councillor White. In favor. De uh, Mayor Smith. In favor. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to item 8.4, adv adv advocacy for the Ontario Public Library funding. Uh, and this was pulled by Councillor Eagle. Councillor Eagle. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, today's the day for the library to shine. So um, I have here that public libraries, I've noticed, have picked up the slack. They have changed a lot through the years. They used to be quiet places where people could seek information and reading materials. Now they've become community hubs where residents not only visit for reading and learning opportunities, arts and cultural activity, as we've mentioned, along with technology assistance, they've become another arm of social assistance with a whole host of social support. This has really surprised me, including children's services. They are providing assistance for people experiencing homelessness, food insecurity, grief and chronic illness, until I was on council, I had no idea that this all takes place in our library. The assistance often begins simply uh, with an interaction at the, right at the front desk, where the staff, they help people find the support they need. They direct them to the, the services. They have that capability. Or just the other day, I heard that uh, they helped a new immigrant uh, to connect with a translator to get the support that person needed to help with their immigration material. Who would know? Many of you know I've been a big supporter of the bookmobile, and I assumed it was always for the children. However, again, I've recently learned that residents unable to uh, leave their homes, they have um, the friendly bookmobile calls on them. And loneliness or, so or social isolation has become a global issue. So I only think how a visit to a person unable to leave their home must feel when that bookmobile and a friendly staff member there is to assist them. So it seems to me that the library has become more like a Service Ontario Depot, and perhaps it's time for the province to recognize that many services that libraries are providing for the people of Ontario and reassess the provincial um, funding model for Ontario public libraries. I recommend that the municipality of Wasaga Beach support the town of Lincoln's call to action by writing a letter to the premier urging the provincial government to consider increasing provincial funding for Ontario's public libraries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ego. Any other comments or questions on this? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, do you have a resolution prepared for that? Thank you, Your Worship. In addition to the motions before Council on the agenda, um, that the report titled Advocacy for Ontario Public Library Funding to the Council Meeting of March 28th be received, and that the Wasaga Beach Public Library Board recommends that Municipal Council advocate for the provincial government to increase library funding to better support community library services, and further that the Town of Wasaga Beach support the Town of Lincoln's call to action urging the provincial government to consider increased provincial funding for Ontario's public libraries and that a letter of support be sent to the Minister of Tourism, Cultural, Sport, Premier, AMO, and all Ontario municipalities. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So you've heard the question. Could we have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Moved by Councillor Eagle, seconded by Deputy Mayor Snell. All in favor? Sorry, recorded vote. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Councillor DeLeo? In favor. Councillor Ego? In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell? In favor. Councillor Timms? In favor. Councillor White? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. Carried unanimously.
My apologies. And Councillor uh, Belanger, and we'll turn the floor over to Deputy Mayor Snell. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to, um, first of all, it, um, Madam Clerk, are you wanting to comment at all in regards to this report? I think this is such a great, again, we got so much, so much uh, great news coming out today. Maybe if you wanted to speak to it first and then I'll comment. Thank you, uh, and through you, uh, Your Worship. So the need for access to medical care um, has been a serious issue in this community and across the province. Um, council recognized that and ensured that that priority um, was encompassing in the council priorities. And then in 2023, the deputy CAO and his team brought an innovative solution to this council table and council supported. So um, as part of that program and initiative, the turnkey medical clinic at 160 Beck Street was leased by the town. Dr. Grayling provided all the equipment as a donation as well to the town. Uh, the town then partnered with the Georgian Bay Ontario Health Team, Georgian Bay Family Health Team, and South Georgian Bay Community Health Center, and opens it, opened the doors in October 2023. So we've started with the Tuesday and Thursday nurse practitioner clinic in the morning for unattached patients. And the family health team also provides mental health services, diabetes education, and smoking cessation as part of their program by referral or self-referral. In 20, uh, December 2023, the nurse practitioner and led after hours clinic opened their, its doors Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings. And this is for all patients, whether they be attached to a doctor or unattached. Since opening, we've seen an increase of patients, patients from three to four per evening to now an average of 15 to 20. And we have to remember that's one nurse practitioner seeing almost 15 to 20 patients in a four hour period. 90% of those patients visiting the after hours clinic are from Wasaga Beach. In December, um, excuse me, March 18th, we uh, announced a new service, single session mental health counseling that's been introduced. This service is provided on Monday and residents of South Georgian Bay who do not have a local family doctor are able to book this single session mental health counseling um, through that organization. Now we look to April 2024, and this is the exciting news that's come from the province. Um, they have awarded the South Georgian Bay Ontario Health Team $880,000 in funding as part of their $110 million commitment to health care throughout the province. The Ontario Health Team and Family Health Team are now partnering with the town to bring more services to the clinic in addition to the services I've already outlined. We will now have three nurse practitioners Monday through Friday uh, during the day. There will be a social so, uh, worker services program, occupational therapy, and physiotherapy. These services that were not easily accessed previously by town residents will now be uh, right here in town. We're continuing to work with the Ontario Health Team as they onboard the primary care staff as a result of this funding. And as the services come online, staff will launch an aggressive communication campaign to ensure the community is aware of these amazing services and how to obtain them. It's really important to note that the town's not gonna incur any additional costs to what the budget has been approved for 2023. All additional costs that relate to these enhanced services will be funded by the Ontario Health Team with that funding received from the province. So it's truly exciting news for this community and we are excited for what April will bring. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Snell. Thank you, Your Worship, and, and thank you for speaking to that, um, Madam Clerk, because, you know, as we all see on Facebook, sometimes people make comments and they say, well, you know, Wasaga Beach missed the boat, uh, unlike Innisfil, that it's getting one nurse practitioner, but here we are, in fact, getting several. So um, thank you to all the staff for, for their efforts. And it, clearly the numbers, when you look at 21 patients in December when it, when it softly opened, um, to now seeing 152 uh, in last month alone is significant. And obviously the demand is there. I can speak to it myself. I've been sick for it feels like forever now, but in about three weeks. And, and I had the opportunity to have to go to our clinic. And um, I arrived there about a half an hour before the doors opened, so around four o'clock. I was the second person in line. And by the time the doors opened, uh, there were 10 other people behind me. And again, all local residents, all different ages, all different issues. And the uh, customer service was exceptional. Uh, the process was seamless. Uh, got me in, got me out, got me loaded up with some meds. And, uh, and away we went, but uh, 
No comment. <laughs> but anyways, I just, I just really want to applaud the staff because, again, creative solutions, innovative ideas, and now the province is coming in and, and supporting us as well. So thank you very much. Oh, the comments I had written down here, Deputy Mayor. All right, we're now going to uh, Councillor Timms. Thank you, Your I, I'm sorry, Councillor Timms. Uh, it, I, sorry, I'll go first to Councillor Belongi because he pulled this originally along with uh, Councillor Snell. Or sorry, Deputy Mayor Snell. Councillor Belongi. Thank you, Your Honour. I'd... Uh, Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, uh, what, what was it? Uh, he got a new crown yesterday, so I was going to call him His Majesty, but uh, uh, anyhow, he's got a great smile today. Anyhow, first of all, I would like to uh, take this moment to acknowledge uh, former uh, Councillor Ron Eagle for his dedication and commitment for first uh, being very uh, determined to open an uh, after-hour medical clinic, which we were successful to do. And then I think uh, for the public, it's important to know that the recommitment of this council is the only thing that put us in the opportunity to take advantage of this funding. Had we not had a medical center, that funding very likely would have gone to a, another community. And uh, this is fantastic news. I think one of the hardest things in a, in a town of 25,000 people plus is to communicate effectively about the services that we provide. And uh, with that, I would uh, recommend that I was seeing the medical center on social media very regularly, and I think that should be ongoing, that we, we really need to probably 10 times a week be pumping out the services that are offered because we think we get the message out there, but there's so many people that don't realize even that we have a medical clinic, never mind that we just tripled the capacity. So. So anyhow, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the news and uh, anything we can do to promote that in our community is very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Now moving to Councillor Timms. Thank you, Your Worship. And, and a suggestion to the clerk, which has most likely been already thought of, but could we also use the water bill to communicate the new services that are being provided? Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, the Director of Communications and I have been discussing this, and, and I know that this is going to be a priority of ours to uh, ensure that that medical clinic is properly communicated. Thank you, Councillor. And now over to Councillor DeLeo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, this is great news for a clinic. Fantastic. So, Madam Clerk, can you tell me the hours the clinic will operate Monday through Friday with the three practitioners, please? Uh, thank you, and through you, Your Worship. So the clinic um, will be open 8.30 to 4.30 on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Friday, 8.30 to 3.30 on Wednesday and Thursday. And then, of course, our after-hours clinic on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings from 4.30 to 9.00. So it's very exciting. And again, as the services are onboarded, we're still trying to, uh, excuse me, not us, the family health team is still recruiting the primary care staff uh, that are required for this new program. So once they all begin to start operating at the clinic, we will be posting that on our webpage. Thank you. Now to Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to the clerk. Um, I just want to follow up on uh, Councillor Belanger's comment there. Did we get this funding solely because we have the facility, or would we have received this funding through a different um, delivery vehicle? Thank you, uh, through your worship. So this funding was provided to the Ontario Health Team. So all the health funding that came as part of this $110 million um, program from the province was funneled down through the Ontario Health Team throughout the province. The Ontario Health uh, Team are not primary care providers, so then they form that relationship with the family health teams to, to recruit the staff. So that's how the funding is um, channels down. The town has the medical clinic space leased, so we then partner to allow those services to operate out of that clinic. Thank you, and through your worship. Um, 
So you are saying that because we have this, we got the funding. If we didn't have this clinic, we would not have been eligible for this funding? I, I can't say that for sure. What I can say is uh, at the June 8th, 2023 council meeting, this um, council supported that letter to the province to request the funding from the Ontario Health Team. So again, whether that was a consideration, I, I'm to assume it was because the letter of support was provided. All right, thank you, Councillor Eagle. Your Worship, and thank you, Madam Clerk, um, for explaining all of this so well, and Councillor Belanger for mentioning um, how determined Ron was. I won't go on about that, but that's an understatement. I can see him pounding the table constantly. Um, and I'm really grateful to see all this collaboration, the working through town staff, the collaboration, um, you know, with the uh, Georgian Bay and, and I'm just grateful for all of the work that's been done on that and, and uh, especially the levels of government and people coming together. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ego. Any other questions or comments? All right. I, I think, uh, again, to staff, um, what an excellent job uh, you have done on so many levels, but on this level particularly, uh, carrying out the wishes of this council to make sure that we got a, a walk-in clinic secured and opened as quickly as we possibly could. And, and uh, you know, what's important, I think, to note uh, above and beyond everything else that we've talked about here is that, you know, we're not doing this alone. Uh, the municipality took uh, the initiative to secure the building, uh, to uh, speak to and uh, build a relationship with a wonderful individual uh, in Dr. Grayling, uh, and for him to donate uh, all of the equipment, uh, which is practically brand new, uh, and us to receive that building, uh, and again, almost brand new condition. It's a wonderful, beautiful building. Uh, and then for staff to be able to work with other levels uh, and other partners um, within the medical uh, field, if you will, uh, to create the teams that are required to not only have just a walk-in, after-hours walk-in clinic, but a, a clinic that is now offering so many more services than we probably even thought or dreamed of. Uh, and I am confident that this will get even better. And so, you know, the total amount uh, in, the, in the budget from the province, I think you said was one point, how billion? I believe it's 110 million. Um, 110 million, sorry, uh, total. Uh, 440 municipalities in the province of Ontario, folks. Uh, and uh, out of 110 million, we received, uh, us and our partners, uh, 890,000. Um, so probably more than, than uh, what most would say is our fair share. Um, but that come from collaboration uh, and uh, cooperative work uh, environment with uh, all of the teams involved to, to make this um, an even better uh, clinic uh, for our communities. Uh, folks, family doctors are not a problem just in Wasaga Beach. They are a problem throughout this province. I think uh, the, the budget uh, reported somewhere around 660 family doctors, uh, critically short, about 660. Uh, don't hold me to that exact number, but it's, it's an enormous amount across our province. And so I also want to thank uh, Premier Ford uh, and his government uh, and the, ministry, the Minister of Health for providing this funding and uh, making it available to communities like ours so as that we can uh, until we find a better solution and uh, are able to find more family doctors. Um, you know, the opportunity to provide this service to our citizens. So this is a good news story all around, just as the uh, first medical walk-in clinic was and uh, that Councillor Eagle worked so, so diligently and so hard on uh, Ron Eagle uh, and, uh, and also this council and our priorities. So a uh, great news story. Again, thank you to staff. Thank you to the ministry. Thank you to all the partners uh, that work at this with us. So we do have a motion, uh, and the motion reads that the report titled Wasaga Beach Medical Clinic Update to the Council Meeting of March 28, 2024, be received for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder on this, please? Councillor Ego and Councillor Belanger, all in favor. Sorry, recorded vote, Madam Clerk. Councillor Belanger. In favor. Councillor DeLeo. In favor. Councillor Ego. In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell. In favor. Councillor Timms. In favor. Councillor White. In favor. Mayor Smith. In favor. 
Carried unanimously. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And moving on to 8.7, the Treasurer's Statement of Council Remuneration and Expenses. Uh, this was pulled by uh, Councillor Belanger uh, and myself. So, Councillor Belanger, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor. I, uh, again, it's, uh, I, I want to clarify, and it's uh, somewhat unfortunate, unfortunate that there's been quite a bit of uh, activity on social media uh, uh, about parts of this report and uh, people indicating how possibly could I have such high cell phone costs and uh, these types of things. I, ju I just wanted to clarify that uh, uh, when I uh, first uh, started with council, uh, one of the benefits afforded uh, council members was $50 a month towards internet and $50 a month towards your cell phone. And uh, I, I can tell you that uh, that's, you know, extremely uh, reasonable given that uh, I spend an awful lot of time on uh, town duties. And uh, by a, an oversight uh, at that time, I had uh, brought in my statements as requested. You had to prove that you, you had those services. But for seven years, I was not provided that benefit. And uh, when this was finally realized and repaid, without interest, I might add, it, uh, it was repaid at $100 a month <coughs> for the time that I did not receive that benefit. So uh, I just want everyone to know that I, I was entitled to this. Uh, uh, the other council members were getting this benefit and uh, it was repaid to me in a lump sum and that's why um, my expense for cell phone and internet is uh, a little high for 2023. Thank you. And here I just thought it was because you're a talker, Councillor. Um, all right, uh, I have also uh, pulled this in and I pulled it because, uh, and, I, and my apologies to the CFO, I didn't have an opportunity prior to this meeting now to have this discussion with you, but um, you know, what's important I think is that the public understand the remuneration to council uh, and that they understand it clearly and uh, that it is an open and transparent process. Uh, and so I appreciate that this comes uh, before the public so they can see uh, what is happening. But there's a couple of things here that, that are a bit of a concern to me. And, uh, you know, it's the treasurer's statement with respect to councillors' remuneration and expenses. And I just, I'd like to see some changes made in future with respect to the chart and how it shows up. Uh, the remuneration in category one is fine. The benefits uh, uh, are fine. Uh, per diems, meeting and conferences, expenses, uh, cellular and internet uh, services. Um, these are expenses, so these, uh, it's important that these be separated, I think, because the public needs to understand that this is not income. This is simply returning to members of council what it is that they're spending out of their pocket in order to do uh, this job. Um, and so uh, per diems are often paid to members of council uh, simply because, um, you know, they're taking time to attend a conference or whatever away from their full-time job. Uh, and uh, so they're paid a per diem, which in many cases doesn't uh, equal or come close to uh, what the councillor, the council member would be making at their full-time job anyway. But it is it is something that adds, and uh, but it certainly isn't income uh, or remuneration, in my opinion. It is to replace an expense or an out of pocket. Uh, so I'd just like to see that broken out a little further. And then when we get to the other uh, category. Uh, I think it, it's too, it leaves too much uh, open for interpretation uh, in the public realm and I'd like to see those expenses explained uh, a little uh, better. Uh, so for example, 26528 for me, uh, the vast majority of that is uh, from the hydro boards. Uh, so I think that the public needs to know what that is for and why. Uh, and then I think just, just to be a little more open and transparent to the public would be appreciated. But other than that, I appreciate all you do, Madam CFO. And, um, you know, like politics, we, it's very tough to get it right all the time and accomplish everything. Madam CFO. 
Thank you, Your Worship. And certainly I agree with you that um, splitting out the revenues and the expenditures as it reimbursements would be adding clarity to the report. So that's a, a good recommendation. And we can certainly add more comments in to explain the other column as well. So we'll do that going forward in the, in the next um, uh, year's report. Uh, however, I did uh, learn this morning that there is one amendment that will be made a small amount um, of $283 that will need to be added to the report for a rental room expense that has not been reflected in this report at this time. So we will bring that forward as well um, and include that amendment if we could in this approval of this statement. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. So, Madam Clerk, uh, we know it's coming forward. We want it to be approved within this statement. So. Uh, any changes then to this resolution? Thank you, Your Worship. There's no um, change to the resolution required. This is simply for council information and a requirement of the Municipal Act. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Eagle? Through you, Your Worship. Yes, I don't have it in front of me, but when Councillor Belanger was speaking, I have to, in his defense, because this will be all over Facebook, that he actually saves the town money because he's the main driver to many conferences. So I'm not using my gas allowance, I'm not paying for parking, other people are not. He's often the Uber driver for these events. So if anybody's looking, why is his expenses higher? That's one of the main reasons. He's a great chauffeur. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ego, and thank you, Uber Joel. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have a resolution if there's no other questions or comments. And we do have a resolution at the report titled 2023 Treasurer's Statement of Council Renumeration Expenses to Council Meeting of March 28th, 2024 be received for information. Uh, Mover and a seconder for this, please. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Eagle. Madam Clerk. Your Worship, Councillor Belanche. In favor. Councillor DeLeo. In favor. Councillor Eagle. In favor. Deputy Mayor Snell. In favor. Councillor Timms. In favor. Councillor Way. In favor. Mayor Smith. In favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to item number 12, recommendations arising from boards and committees. We have none. Item number 13, council requested staff reports as listed in the attached documents. Any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, moving along to 14 notices of motion. Sorry, Your Worship. I believe Councillor DeLeo, you have a request for a council's uh, request to staff report? I do, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, Councillor DeLeo. So this is uh, going back to 13 council requested staff reports? Correct. Thank you, go ahead. Okay. I'd like to request a staff report with stats of our senior, uh, senior resident participants with their Snow Windjill program for 2023 and 2024, and the amount of grant fund used as well for this period. All right, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. We would just require a seconder for that request. All right, so we have Councillor DeLeo moving that, seconded by Deputy Mayor Snell. Okay. All right. Which is all in favor. So this would be a recorded vote as well? I'm sorry. No, no just it's... call a regular vote. All right, before I do that, Councillor uh, Ego, did you have something? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Councillor DeLeo. I didn't hear you clearly. Sorry, you were going too quickly. I'll read it again. I'd like to request a staff report with stats of our senior resident participants with our Snow Windrill program for 2023-2024 and the amount of grant fund used as well for this period. So basically, I'd like that report so we know who participated, how many participated, and how much of the funds was used. Thank you. All right, so you've heard the question. Uh, it's been moved and seconded by Councillor DeLeo and Deputy Mayor Snell. All in favor? That motion carries you now. Uh, sorry, uh, opposed? Uh, so ra raise your hand. Okay, there we go. That's at six to one. All right, moving on then to item number 14, notices of motion. We have none. Uh, moving on to item number 15, the closed session. Uh, and we do have a resolution that pursuant to the Municipal Act 2001 is amended. The next portion of the March 28, 2024 council meeting will move into closed session to consider the following matters. A, a land matter. Uh, in accordance with Section 239.2H, information explicitly supplied in confidence to the municipality by the Crown Agency, uh, and B, the West Side development in accordance with Section 239.2E, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, and C, be a municipal beachfront property in accordance with Section 239.C, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land 
by a municipality or local board. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this, please? Moved by Councillor Tim, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? That motion carries unanimously, and we'll now move into closed session.
we're live, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Clerk. You are now coming into closed session and lunch. Uh, 15.7 is a rising report from our lovely clerk, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Council entered closed session to discuss the following matters. Item 15.1, a land matter pursuant to Section 239.2H of the Municipal Act. Item 15.3, municipal beachfront property pursuant to Section 239C of the Act. As a result of these discussions, there's nothing further to report. Council also discussed fit item 15.2, West Side Development, pursuant to Section 239.2E of the Act. As a result of that discussion, staff direction was provided. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And now moving on to item number 16 is bylaws and a recommendation uh, that the bylaws 2024-22 and 2024-23 be received and to be deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered, uh, sorry, passed this 14th day of March 2024. Could I have a mover and a seconder for this? Councillor White and Deputy Mayor Snell, all in favor? That motion carries unanimously, and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>